Today, Mandy Hutchison joins me to ask the question... Who's playing what now? Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Who's Playing What Now? The game that tests our contestants' knowledge of which board, card, and tabletop games have been played the most by the most people in the last month. And today is a super exciting special episode because one of my favorite board game media people, Mandy Hutchison, which you may recognize from her work with the Dice Tower and to die for board games and other neat things, is joining me via the tubes and wires that make up the internet. Mandy, how, how are you? What have you been up to? I'm good. I'm so excited. I've been seeing these and I'm like, how come I'm not on there? So I can't complain. I'm on here now. So things are good. Busy. Lots of conventions coming up. So I assume it's the same for you too. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's really strange because you know summer is always a really busy convention season, but then there's this little, little break, but then in fall to early winter, it seems like there's this another big explosion of them. They're spread out a little bit. It's not too bad, but I'm sure I'll find something else to, you know, fill the time. <laughs> oh, of course. Always. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm I'm glad that you joined me today to help fill the time by winning a gift certificate to the Board Game Geek store for a lucky viewer. And today's randomly picked viewer who posted a comment on last episode using the hashtag who's playing what now is Game Night Fam, who posted a comment saying that they are playing Terraforming Mars a lot recently. Speaking of Terraforming Mars, I bet we're about to see that game again in just a second because before we get to the very first round of our game and start winning some money for the Game Night fam, let's go through the top 10 most played games from last month, which will be off limits for this first round. Number 10 is Sagrada. Players get to replicate a stained glass window by building up a grid of dice on their player board. Number 9 is King Domino. You are seeking new lands, and in order to do so, you connect like lands, domino-like tiles, to your existing kingdom. Number eight is Scythe. It takes place in the 1920s, and players earn their fortune and claim their faction stake in the land around the mysterious factory. Did anyone ever figure out exactly what the factory used to produce before the game began? Um, not exactly, but I'm thinking something cool. I'm thinking they made those little plastic ends that go on the tips of shoelaces. That's aglets. I, I, I bet you it was an aglet factory. I've learned something new. Look at that. <laughs> Number seven is Splendor. Players are merchants of the Renaissance, and they must collect tokens to buy gem mine shops and other things to gain points. Mmm, I love those points. Mm -hmm. And gems. I love the gems. Oh, that's true. Number six is Welcome To. It's a flip and write where you want to build the best town in the 1950s by making fences, pools, and other great bits to making your town awesome. Number five is Gloomhaven. You are an adventurer with specific skills and they work together to fight monsters and clear dungeons and await and explore some fabulous ruins. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you remembered to add that. I almost forgot, dot, dot. Oh yes, the ruins. Number four is the Quacks of Quidlinburg. You're a quack doctor making a secret brew by adding fun ingredients, which will lead you to victory. And number three, oh, there it is, is Terraforming Mars. So players are corporations working in the terraforming process, but it's a competition where you're also vying to advance human infrastructure throughout the solar system. Whew. Number two is Azul. So here you're drafting color tiles to decorate your palace, but... Be careful not to take on too many or they come crashing to the floor and, well, you lose some points. Well, I think that's how those ruins were made from Gloomhaven. Right? It's yeah. all connected. And number one is Wingspan. You are a bird enthusiast, as am I. So a researcher, bird watcher, and you're looking to attract the best birds to your network of wildlife preserves. Ka! There are the games that the most people logged plays of on BGG last month. And that top 10 list is off limits to you as we start round one, in which I'm going to ask you to give me your guesses for the five games that you think the most people have logged plays of on Board Game Geek this past month. And you are going to win a penny per player that logged plays towards our prize pool. All right? Okay. So as soon as you're ready, I will take your first of five guesses. Okay, 
I'm trying. I'm so nervous. So don't at me, anybody, if these are terrible. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying, don't at me, bro. Okay. <laughs> don't at me. <laughs> All right, here's my first one, and maybe because I've been playing a lot of it, uh, I'm gonna put Clank up there. Oh, Clank. All mm. right. Let me go to the old list. I have here the top 1,000 most oh, logged wow. games. So let me scan through. And sure. actually, scanning through will be incredibly easy because out of the top 1,000, Clank comes in at number 24 with 1,099 <laughs> players logging plays, putting us at $10.99 right off the bat with question number one. Okay, good start. I'm hoping we can keep that trajectory going. <laughs> oh, I've complete and total faith in you, Mandy. All so, right. Yeah, let's, let's put that faith to the test <laughs> with your second pick. Okay, my second pick is Keyforge. Oh, good pick here. Keyforge is definitely on the list. It's at number 86 hmm. with 596 people logging plays of it last month. Okay. Uh, interestingly, those 596 people logged over 3,000 plays of it. Oh! <laughs> but, oh, well. but the number that we're using here is the number of players. So another $5.96 added to the price pool. All right. Let's, let's hope my third one can be a bit more successful here. Uh, I'm going to go with Space Base. Oh, Space Base. Yeah, I see a lot of people playing that one. So hopefully they're logging it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they are because it comes in at number 33 Yay. with 926 people logging plays of it last month. Adding another nine dollars and twenty six cents to the price pool, cha ching! Yay. So yeah, that was that was a really good pick. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you know, no list is complete without a felt. <laughs> so, mm. why not pick the one I think that tends to make it to the table a lot? Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy. Oh, an oldie but a goodie. I have a strong that... suspicion there might be more plays than logs, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually. A very goodie because it comes in at number 18 on the list overall. 1,291 people logged plays of it last month, adding another $12.91 to the price pool. Very, very good pick. So excited. Okay, so the last one is out of my realm, but I'm hoping enough people have logged plays of it. And I think I've been hanging around Sam Healy a lot because... <laughs> <laughs> it's on my list, so you think you, I think you know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna go with Blood Rage. Oh, Blood Rage. Okay, Blood Rage is on our list, right close to our top 100 at a number 107, uh, with okay. 502 people logging plays, bringing your grand total for the first round to an excellent $44.14. Boom Dizzle, right off the bat. You. I can't believe I said boom dizzle. I <laughs> That's awesome. So, it made it so much better. <laughs> $44.14 uh, already in this very first round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset for the second round, and we will be right back with your next game. Mandy, are you ready for our second round? I think so, yes. Okay, that's, that's I'll take it. All right. <laughs> in the second round, uh, I believe you brought a 10-sided dice with you. Because what we're going to do is there's three games and you're going to try and predictably, pre you are going to try to predictively roll how many people played each of these games. Each of these three games, we're going to do one at a time, has had between 100 to 999 people play each of these games. So you are going to use your advanced dice rolling skills as a board game media person. And you're going to try and roll each of the numbers in the number of people who logged plays of the game. However, if you do not match, you're not out of the game, all you gotta do is tell me if you think the actual number was higher or lower, right? Okay? And then we will compare scores. And in this first question, every correct number that you get is gonna be $5 added to the prize pool. Oh, by the way, I went through your uh, Board Game Geek profile and I found what was listed, at least at that time, as I... your favorite games. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I haven't updated it in forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's usually the response I get. <laughs> All right. So tell me if you would remember these games. Sure. <laughs> okay. okay. The first game on the list is The Gallerist. How many people logged plays of The Gallerist last month? Okay. Three. 300 something people did not play The Gallerist. So three is not the correct number in the hundreds place. Do you think the actual number is higher or lower than three? Wow. Okay. I'm actually, it's a pretty heavy game. I mean, I love it. It's one of my favorites, but it's not one I see a lot. 
So I'm going to say it's lower. All right. You're saying it is lower. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's go for the number, the second number, the number in the tens place. All right. Give another roll. Give another roll. Uh, I got a four. You got a four. The number in the tens place is not a four. So do you think the actual number was higher or lower than four? I think because I went with a slightly lower number in the first spot, probably hinging on higher, I'm going to say it is higher than a four. You are saying it is higher than a four. Yeah, All my right. rationalizing makes no sense, but that's okay. We're going to go with it. <laughs> Locking it in. All right, let's go Let's go for the uh, final number in the ones place. Eight. Eight. All right. Eight is not the final number. Do you think the final number is higher or lower? I will say that it is lower. You say it is lower. All right. Locking that in? Yes. Before I reveal the actual number, do you want to change any of your selections? I'm confident. I'm going to, like multiple choice, go with your first answer. All right. I think that your confidence is correctly placed because... 190 people played it, meaning you got all three of those. So, you go, so boom, right there, right off the bat, nailed it. Woo! There you go. That's how it's done. All right. Awesome. Let's continue on to the second of our three games. Okay. Number 210 overall on the list. It's Food Chain Magnate. <sighs> Another good one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Roll, roll that uh, number for the hundreds. Okay. Here we go. Here Price. we go. Oh. A four. Ooh, a four. Oh, middle of the road almost. I right. know. The first number is not a four. So do you think more or fewer people played? I think because, again, falling into that heavier category, as much as I would like to, to be very high, I do mm -hmm. think it may be slightly lower than a four. All right. I'm going to lock that in for you. Okay. All right. Go ahead and roll the number in the tens place. Eight. Eight. Oh, nope. That's one. No. Okay. Oh, eight. yeah. This one. Oh, my goodness. I think it's lower, but it's like by like one. So <laughs> I don't have any rationalization for that. I'm just, it's a feeling. So I'm going to say it's lower. All right. Lower than eight. All right. That's playing the odds too. Anyway, so that's, that's good. All yeah. right. Go ahead and roll the number for the tens place. And it's a three. You got a three. Okay, it is not three as well. So is the actual <laughs> number higher or lower? I'm, oh boy, this one's tricky. This one's a hard one. So I, um, I'm i going to say this is slightly higher. All right. All right. Then before I reveal the actual number of players, did you want to change any of your selections? Nope, got to go All with right. it. Worked last time. The actual number of people who log plays of Food Chain Magnate last month is 312. So you got two out of the three, adding another $10 <gasps> to the price pool. Oh, so close. And I, you know, I went back and forth on that last number. And I said, just slightly, just the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so close to oh, it. Shoot. So this last question, okay, is a little trickier. So okay. it's going to be worth a little bit more. Each correct answer for this last one is going to be for $10. Okay. Oh. We're doubling it. So there we go. Okay. You're on a roll here. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the third and final game we have here is Lords of Waterdeep, which Oof. came in overall on the list at number 65. Wow. This is going to be a tough one. <laughs> First number I have is a nine. Oh, okay. So the number in the hundredths place is not nine. Okay. I was going to say, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is... Well, actually, I should be careful here. I will say it is lower. All right. I think that's yep. a good good choice considering. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It kind of makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and roll that second number. Seven. Seven. Oof. The second number is not a seven. And this is tough because could be like borderline oh boy i think for now until i see what's happening afterward i'm gonna say that it's oh my goodness i'm gonna say higher okay but we're gonna just yeah i may come back to that one all okay. right all right and your final one the number in the ones place is a five. Oh, uh dead in the <laughs> middle of the dead center of the roll there a five it is yeah. not the final number so what do you think the actual one is 
points. I'm going to say it is lower. Lower. All right. So, before I reveal, uh, Lord, the number for Lords of Waterdeep, which I believe is your favorite game, and I'm pretty sure that you wrote that because it had the uh, Canadian O-U-R-I-T-E for favorite, <laughs> so <laughs> no, it had to be written by a Canadian. <laughs> right, so you know, yeah, it's definitely up there as one of my favorite games for sure. I think, oh boy, hey, uh, you know what, I, I was really wavering on that seven, I'm... I'm I think I'm going to stay with it. I have a feeling that this is not going to be my best showing, but it, this was a tough one. So I'm going to stay with where I am. Okay. You you got kind of tricky roles there, too. So the actual number of people who logged plays of Lords of Waterdeep was 669. So that, that still <sighs> adds a nice chunk of change to our prize pool here. Let me... Uh... Yeah, and I knew it. I was like, I should have changed it. <laughs> That brings your grand total for this episode to $79.14 that you have won to, for the Game Night Fam uh, in the form of a gift certificate to the Board Game Geek online store. I'm so excited. Hopefully, I mean, yes. I, I mean, I was excited to play. I think I did fairly well. So Oh, yes. I was, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was happy to be part of it. Oh, well, but you you pulled it out, and I'm really, really glad that you did, and I, I'm hoping that Game Night Fam uh, is able to claim their gift certificate. Uh, if you are Game Night Fam and you would like to do that very thing of the claiming of the gift certificate, see this video's descriptions for instructions on how to do that. And if you would like to enter to win next episode's gift certificate, all you gotta do is you gotta leave a comment in the description below using the hashtag, who's playing what now? And you can comment on anything you want. The uh, favorite games you've been playing most recently, uh, Mandy, what's what's something else that they could comment on? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> you could comment below having a suggestion on what you could comment about below. <laughs> How about that? That's really good, because I, I probably would have made it game-related, and I feel like that wouldn't be super original, like games played sort of thing or something coming out, and I like that. That takes it in a different direction. <laughs> there you go. See, we, we've we've gone a totally non-conformist approach to it. I like that. I like it. I like it too. So, Mandy, thank you for joining me. And just real quick again, where can people find you on the internet? And and uh, let let us know all the places that that you are now being. I know there's so much. So. Big breath. Here we go. So I'm on uh, mostly, uh, you'll see me a lot on Twitter under Board Gamer Pinup. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, Board Gaming Pinup Girl. You can also find me on the Dice Tower Network, and uh, that's at thedicetower.com. You can also email me if you want. Uh, that's Mandy, Mandy with an I at dicetower.com. I also have my own channel, To Die For Games, and we're on YouTube. You can also email me at the same address, but it's with a number two instead of T-O for To Die For Games. I think I covered it all, and uh, if not, email me and I can tell you some more. <laughs> <laughs> you got all the bases covered there. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Mandy, for joining us, and uh, until next time, uh, let's go play some games. Absolutely. <laughs> Number six is Welcome To. Welcome To. Is no, wait, I skipped nope. the percent. That's it. I was like, oh, gosh, did I do a mistake? <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was me. <laughs> That's okay. That's You're okay. You're not the only one having a day, apparently. <laughs>